that series of question and answer. And we will now move to the fourth question. Betsy, you can come on up. And while she does, in 1950, manufacturing accounted for about one in three jobs in America. It is now less than one in 10, to give you an idea of the kind of academic challenges needed. We now hear from Elizabeth Riley Wasserman, the Senior Vice President of Human Resources and Organization Development at Mercy Health System. Elizabeth is a board member of the Philadelphia Workforce Investment Board and an advisor to the Job Opportunity Investment Network, or JOIN. That's it. Good evening. Thank you very much. Let me give you a little context. Um, Mercy Health System in, uh, is a large employer in the Philadelphia region. Over, we have over 6,000 employees. Um, uh, our turnover is no longer double digit. Okay, so we're probably about 9% turnover rate. And last year in 2009, we saw over 120,000 applications for those empty roles in the health system. Okay, just a little bit of context in terms of it, what's happening for us in the uh, Delaware Valley. The challenges here in Philadelphia region are particularly difficult. Currently, more than half of all working age Philadelphians do not have the workforce literacy skills to compete effectively in our knowledge-based economy. That compares to about 38% statewide. So it's pretty uh, daunting. And to compound things, workforce literacy is a moving target. As industries change, so do the basic skills employees need to compete for other than the lowest level jobs. As a leader in the healthcare industry, the new, new reform legislation that Congress just passed has a huge implications. The mandate to implement electronic medical records means obviously better health care, but also more of our workforce needs to be computer literate. Not just able to push the right buttons, but to understand the implications of pushing those buttons upstream and downstream, to be able to do great problem solving on the job, to really see the benefits of that application in terms of improved patient care. Unfortunately, based on the statistics that I'm seeing, actually even in real life, there aren't enough Philadelphians who have the workforce literacy to compete for the career level jobs in the knowledge-based economy that we have. That means that employers need to invest more and more dollars in training, non-productive time, okay, um, just to s ensure that that new employee can do the job. So. You know, typically, as we were talking about even uh, upskilling the nursing workforce, that's an average nine months, six to nine months on the job training. But for those colleagues who we have who are um, taking on that health information technology, those applications don't exist in our community colleges. There are two major applications that are being used in the Delaware Valley today. Those applications, students do not even touch those applications until they hit the job. So from an economic development standpoint, even in addition, that discourages new businesses from coming into the, uh, the Delaware Valley. And that's why continued investment in developing workforce literacy is worth every dollar. Investment is needed on two levels, remediation of that current workforce, upskilling those individuals who currently have an on average seventh grade reading level. They can't read a manual and in order to learn how to do the job. So we need to upskill those individuals. But in addition, developing the literacy of our current workforce. Projections show that a modest $12 million a year investment over the next seven years would produce nearly $400 million in taxes and savings, a 450% return. Higher wages would, would produce a huge increase in tax revenue and a sharp decline in unemployment costs and assisting needing families. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. We're going to applaud for Elizabeth.